All right, everybody, this is Sheets and Bobby, and we have a special guest, Steve Rubenfair, on here. And to kind of just give a little bit of background, for those of you that, uh, that don't know, my nickname, Sheets, uh, originally comes from the horse racing world. You should all know that by now. And uh, my, my partner in horse racing for a long time now is, is Steve. Uh, we were roommates in, in California for a while. He's literally the only person in the, in the universe I would trust with, with my horse bets, except for myself. Uh, just, just overall, a really, really, really smart guy, and um, and he always has a little something going on. He's always been an entrepreneur, and what's interesting is during the pandemic, um, you know, Steve and I are pretty focused. We talk about horses. We don't want to talk about anything else. And he says he told me something he was working on. I'm like, why didn't you, why didn't you tell me about this before? Basically, he's like, well, you never asked or something like that. And it was something that I thought was 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 was, was interesting. Now, as you guys know, I mean, we don't really do too much. With the uh, with with sports betting, right? Because I have and Bobby and I are going to fight, going to get a fist fight about this, because I don't really like betting on sports, right? <laughs> and when I say that, Bobby's like, "You got to be freaking kidding me!" I, we, we always we always, we always argue about this. But let me put it to you another way: like I, I don't find the actual like sports betting particularly interesting, right? And then when I get into a project, it's got to be somewhat interesting to me. So people bring me sports betting stuff from time to time, and um, and it's just not interesting to me at all. Just say, "Ooh, I like this game. Do I have an edge? I'll bet it. I'll root for it." I mean, that's I guess fun, but it's not really interesting to me. But when Steve told me about this kind of project he was working on, I mean, I just found it particularly interesting. So. We've just in, in, in full disclosure, Bobby and I have been working with Steve on this for, you know, for quite a while. And I thought it was time to bring Steve on and just talk to the true DFS community about what this is and talk, talk to the world about what this is. Um, so, Steve, tell me what this is, where you developed this, what, what in the hell is going on? All right. Well, thanks, Eric. Uh, Better Takes is a company, as you said, that I started and it basically is a personal betting algorithm that looks through your betting history and reveals your strengths and weaknesses. And it's something that I came up with uh, when betting became legal a couple of years ago, I started uh, screwing around betting on college basketball. And I just started wondering like, how do I do in certain situations? And I was surprised to find that there was no tool out there that uh, gave you information about your own betting habits. And so I decided to, you know, why not build it? Uh, you know, why not go ahead and try to build one ourselves? So basically what it does is it combs through your betting history, finds your strengths and weaknesses and areas that you might not have known that you have an advantage or don't have an advantage. And we all have patterns and biases when we bet and there's a, it just exposes a lot of things that are, uh, that are inside you directing your bets. When you first came to me about with this, you know, we were looking at this thing as just even a way to figure out like what you were betting on, like how you were doing and. And when Steve was talking to me about this first, like, you know, I can't even find on my freaking record. I mean, I can't even find on my ROI, you know, you go to some of these sites and, and it's for a reason, you know, like they, they, the, the, the sports books don't really want you to know how you're doing. The sports books really don't want you to, to, to be intelligent in a way about, about your record. And, and God forbid, they show you a breakdown of, of how you do on home teams or how you do on, on favorites, how you do or whatever you have this weird, there's this weird ecosystem, Steve, that you compare the sports betting industry to, say, poker. So when poker was really big, it was always in the poker site's best interest for people to become good at it. OK, like like they at poker stars actually came to us by the poker X factor. and They said, can you help us do training to help the people get better? And the reason why is because the more the better people got, the more that they would keep churning rake and the longer they would last. Right. So it was always in the in the in the poker size best interest to keep, make people better at it. But there's this kind of weird adversary relationship. Right. In, in the sports books between that between, you know, they just literally want you to lose. Right. So 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 whatever they not whatever they can do to make you lose, whatever they're not too interested as a site in making you either a better, better or at least more knowledgeable what you are betting. So tell me a little about that. Like when you first even tried to figure out, you know, if there was a site to even show you what your bets were, I mean, how frustrating was that? There was, there was nothing out there. Right now, there's a few like rudimentary bet trackers that, like you said, maybe break down how you do with home games or something. But when I first looked, there was not even that out. And now, like you said, the casinos are really, they're really trying to obscure that, that information. They don't want you to see how you're doing. They don't want you to see which doesn't make sense because the same thing as poker, if, if people did better, they would bet more, they would churn more, they get a commission on every bet. You know, it's not like they really, they should really promote it. I mean, if, if people, 
if people are better betters and they, you know, they're going to start betting more and the, the house would get more commission, it would seem. But for now, they really, they really look down on any information that helps betters become better at betting. You, and that's what we're going to do. We, we are going to, um, you know, help the betters look at their past performances, look at their betting history, find their strengths and weaknesses, and they can bet into their strengths. And they can figure out why their weaknesses are their weaknesses. Maybe they don't know enough about certain situations, but we want to help. We want to not only show winners, you know, where they win, but help them with their other spots too, so that they can kind of round out their skill set. Well, let's let's and, talk, let's 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 talk about that for a second. So so, you know, rem, we talked about this a, a couple of days ago. That remember the people that are betting on sports are not you know computers, right? We're, we're people and we have opinions on things and our opinions are based not just on data on, on a sheet, right? They're, they're based on what you feel and what you see and what you think and, and past experiences or whatever it is. And I think it's important you know, to realize that. And when you, when you look into your past histories and things like that, I guess the theory, and this is what was interesting to me is, is does each person have kind of like a profile, right? Of, of what types of things he, he likes to bet on or, and, and, and forget what he likes to bet on. Are there certain things that he is good at as opposed to what he likes, you know, cause there are some things that people would like, people like betting on, but maybe they suck at it. Like, like, let's say I just love betting on giants games, like whenever, but, but it turns out that, that my love of betting on the giants games is actually creating a bias for me. And I end up having like the 30% ROI betting on Giants games, right? So, so, so that's what's interesting to me, uh, uh, this whole idea of taking your betting history and just trying to see if there's some type of bias that you can kind of, kind of I don't know, capitalize on. So I keep asking, do you think that that, that actually exists? I mean, listen, that's, that's obviously the main point of this whole thing is get yeah, there's, better. There's, but there's no ultimately. question. There's no question that we all have our influences and we all have parts of our unconscious really control a lot of our life that we, you know, are, are there's a lot of things that we don't know about ourselves that, that factor into decision making. And there's no reason why that doesn't come into play in betting also. I mean, we think we're making informed decisions, but really there's little things about us, our personalities that enter into bets that, uh, that we're not aware of. And until you have a tool like this, you're never going to know. Like you might think that you're good with the Giants. You might have grown up in New York and all your life been like, you know, I know the Giants after 30 years of betting them. But until you see on paper how you do with the Giants, you don't know that. And there might be other areas that fit with your personality. Everyone's personality is a little different. And for me personally, you know, this thing, whole, this whole thing started because I was trying to figure out where my strengths were in betting college basketball. Now, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. I've started companies from scratch. I've never worked for a company. I've never had a real job. And it's not surprising that that, you know, personality trait in me comes through in my betting. And where it comes through is I almost always only bet underdogs. And the reason I bet underdogs is clear. I, I relate to underdogs. I associate with them. You know, my whole life, I've been the underdog. And so there's something about an underdog that I want to see win. I like that. And so when I bet on college basketball, which is the only thing I bet, 90% of my bets are on underdogs. That's just how I'm wired. But there's probably something in me that's causing both of those things to happen. There's probably some something that happened. Maybe it's innate. Maybe it's something when I was a kid. But whatever it, whatever it is, whatever makes you who you are today is also, it influences your relationships. It influences your business, your job. It's going to also influence your bets. And our job is to find, find that out and find these areas that you don't know where you're good and you have an advantage because, you know, we call it betting on baseball or betting on football, but there's so many different bets. There's so many different situations. And of course, your personality is going to resonate with some of those bets more than others. And there's other, there's no other tool on the market that helps you find those things. So that's well, what we're trying to do. Well, Steve, what's interesting is, is to take it to another industry. And I've given this example before. Just having the knowledge of what a person's bias is, whether it be yourself or somebody else's, is so important. And, and I, I, I make this analogy. It's not an analogy. It's just reality. I mean, the way I've made the majority of my money in my life with respect to the hedge fund that I run is I have a lot of different people that I speak to on the street. And they give me their different opinions, their different bits of advice. And they talk about different things. And each one of them, 
in my head has a particular profile, right? I have one guy, literally every time the guy comes to me with an idea, it's always some short idea in the, in, in the biotech space, okay? It doesn't matter what, it's always the same. I have another guy who's really, who always comes to me with a long idea because of some class action lawsuit. Everybody has their own biases. They don't even know what they are, okay? But I do because I actually see, see it come to me. And having that information is so valuable. To give, to give you an example, I have one guy who says, you should short this, you should short this, you should short this, short this. Believe me, when he comes to me with an idea to buy something, it's just never losing. I mean, just literally ever, okay? Because, because he's going against what his natural bias is. And to me, that has a great degree of strength because I know what that bias is. And, and when you talk about DFS, like daily fantasy sports, Bobby and I, we talk that sometimes. The way I make money, hopefully, here in daily fantasy sports, the first thing I do is I figure out who I like. I'm like, okay, this is what, based on the numbers, this is who I would pick. Then I think, okay, now how do I intentionally play somebody else? Okay, <laughs> because if I'm going to like all these guys, my type of analysis is naturally the type that's going to be way too chalky to ever make money. Okay, and that's just, I just know that about myself because I'm very numbers based. I don't have a lot of vision with respect to like daily fantasy sports lineups. So whatever I come up with is gonna be a very similar type lineup of everybody else. So there's two steps to the way I play. Number one, figure out what I really like. And then number two, figure out why I shouldn't play it, okay? And, 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 and the only way to do that, like you said, is to know yourself and to know what your biases are. And I guess the overarching theory behind this is, is if we can know what our biases are, okay? And we can know what our records are when we either uh, capitalize on that bias or you fade that bias, maybe, just maybe, sports betting is not unbeatable, right? I mean, we talk about this uh, uh, quite a bit, and Bobby and I, we used to not fight about this, but I'm like, oh, I can't bet money betting sports. I mean, the best you could do is make 51%. And all I can say is Bobby just, just says, you know, F you. I mean, he's been putting, putting bets up all year, and he's putting, like, he's putting something which is never going to ever be obtained again, but, but he's been popping like 70 75%. And I'm not saying you can ever get that, but the point is that I, I'm willing to to I'm willing to accept the fact that you can get some kind of edge, right? Betting sports, and I think that something like this is really interesting because because if you can see a pattern of behavior in yourself where I'm always betting on Michigan and and why, I'm always betting on Michigan, but I'm I'm only getting thirty percent winners. Why should I not do that, right? So so tell tell me a little bit about how. I guess not the program, uh, how, how the algorithm, how the program works to, to come up with, with these types of either analyses or recommendations. Sure. Well, what we do is we look through your past history and we take variables. We take different criteria from the games that you've bet. Basically, the way it works is you start off with a prediction. You start off with today's games. You say, OK, I like the Yankees today. And then it goes through your betting history and it finds similar situations. Times you bet on the Yankees, times you bet on away teams, a whole host of variables. And the more data is there, the more variables we're going to look at. So we comb through your history and we say, hey, we distill all these variables that are pertinent to that game that you're betting right now. And we give you what we call an edge score. We give you a numerical representation of your proficiency in that situation. So you like the Yankees today and we say, hey, in those situations that are similar to this, you have a, well, the edge score is scored between one and 100. 50 means you have no edge. So if you have an edge score of 50, that means you have about the same chance as a coin flip in winning the game. If you have more than a 50, that means that you have an edge in that game, that you have a better than average chance of winning. So you open the program in the morning, you say, today I like the Yankees. And then it says, hey, in this game, you have an edge of 54. Now you know that this game is something that you have a skill in. There's some part, there's something about this game that connects with the winning side of you. And so now you can make a more informed decision. You can, it can either validate your choice and you can say, hey, I like the Yankees. Now, now that I have a good edge score, I'm going to bet more. Or it might tell you that you suck at that game. It might give you an edge score of 41 and say, this is not a situation that you do well in. And it might be something that you had no idea you didn't do well in. And you might say, you know what? I kind of like this game, but if it's not something I do well in, I kind of don't want to, I don't want to bet that. I don't want to risk my money in something that I'm probably not going to win. And when you see these things in, in the app, when you see these numbers, 
I mean, you know, it's easy to just go on a, on, a, on a website and make bets and click things and whatever, but it's real money you're betting. And, you know, every bet deserves a lot of thought. And when you see a numerical representation that says, this is not something I should be betting, it's going to make an impact on you. You're going to say, you know what? I'm not going to pull the trigger on this one. I'm not going to do it. How, how, many, how, many, how many bets do you think I, we need to put in nowadays before... And this, I'm just asking a question that people probably are on their minds, you know. How, Before you get meaningful results? Yeah. I mean, how many, how many bets? I think it depends well, on the sport. It depends on the sport. The more, the better. You know what I mean? The more, the more bets you have, the more accurate it's going to be. It does depend on the sport. Uh, you probably need, you know, less bets for something like football to be, to be accurate. Um, and we have a we have a, a great tool. There, we have a, a great tool. Um, if you if you bet legally, if you bet with one of the legal sports books in the United States, we actually have a tool that brings in your past history from the sports books. So you're going to start off with a body with a, more of a betting history. But I mean, you know, I, I just talked to one of our, um, you know, so ba basically, let me bring up the status of the program. We're in beta testing right now. We're almost live. People are using the program. I just spoke with one of our beta te beta testers today. And he had 18 games in there. And, and um, you know, that's not a huge sample, but it was already giving him what he felt was useful information. He was looking at it and said, hey, I had no idea I was so much better at home teams and away games. And he knew it's not a lot of data in there and that could change. But you just have to take that into account. So there's no there's no definite answer with how many games need to be there before the results are relevant. They just get more relevant the more you have. But already when you have 10, 15 games, you already start seeing patterns and you start seeing things. It's pretty wild. So it doesn't need that much to really to really have an impact on, on the understanding of yourself. So if I put in that, you know, I'm thinking of betting the Yankees and it turns out that 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 I kind of suck betting the Yankees. Does it just say like don't bet, or is there, does it make any? It other doesn't make so it doesn't tell you that. So there's a lot of variables in betting a game, right? There's a when you do your homework before you make a decision on whether to bet. There's a lot of different information you get. There's variables that come into play, and this is just one other variable. So this is just one variable of many. It's up to you to decide how to use this information and what you want to do with it. Well, Obviously, if you're going to the game, if you're if the bet is more for entertainment, you're just going to bet it anyway. But, um, you know, it's something that, that every person is going to assimilate a little differently into their betting decisions. And it's just one data point. I mean, if you love, love, love a game, if you think it's the bet of the year and then our software shows you it, it's not really an area that you have a strong proficiency in, you might go ahead and bet it anyway and say, you know what, this bet is so great. I don't care that I suck at this. I'm yeah, but, but, anyway. let me, but what I'm getting at is, is so if, if I say, okay, I, I look, I have all this history, but um, I really, I, you know, my, my initial take is I think I should bet the Yankees. I mean, is there any, what, what if you miss something? What if there, what if you have a big edge in like the Royals or something like that? Is, is the program going to you know, pick that up for you or is it going to recommend that? Or so that, that's a, that's a great question. So um, that's, that's a feature that we're adding very soon. So the, the, the first, the first incarnation is we don't want you to know that we want you to not, we don't want you to know I mean, of course, sometimes you're going to know whether or not you're good at something. But basically, we want you to make that decision of whether or not to bet the game first do you, without knowing if it's something you're good at. So you make a clean decision on whether or not you like a game, and then you see our data, and we show you the edge score, and then you can decide whether or not to bet it. Then when you're done with the flow, when you're done putting in all your games for that day, then we're going to point out some stuff. Then we're going to say, hey, here are some games that you didn't tell us you liked, but you have very high edge scores. The Royals are playing today. You didn't say you like them, but in this situation, you have a 72 edge score, which is very high. So we're not, that doesn't mean that you should bet the Royals. It means that if you like the Royals, it's something you're good at, but you didn't tell us that you like the Royals. So basically um, adding, adding into the mix after the fact would be for a situation where you were close. Let's say you looked at the Royals game and you were close to liking it, and you just kind of just decided, no, I'm not going to go ahead with it. And then we tell you, you know what? It is something that you're great at. Then you might say, okay, you know what? Then I will bet it. So that's going to, so the, the way the flow works is first you tell us your, um, your predictions, you know, the games that you like, then we tell you how good, how good you are in those situations. And then after that, we say, okay, here are some other games that you, you, you know, that other bets where you do have an advantage, 
if you like them. So if you are close, maybe that will put you over the edge. But really, you know, it doesn't really help to say, you know, in this situation, you're really good at if you don't like the game. The whole thing has to start not with the, the, the situation. It doesn't start with us telling you you're good at this. It starts with you saying, I like that game. And then us validating it by saying, okay, well, that's something you're great at. And then if it's very close, if you're close and decided no, we'll tell you that is something you're great at and that might push you over the edge. There, Does that there, make sense? There, yeah, there, there's there's so many different bets that you can make nowadays. I mean, you, you could bet straight bets, you could bet money lines, you could give points, you could buy points. You, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just freaking crazy. One thing that always, I don't know, it's, it's sort, sort of tilted me is, is I would bet, say, the Giants minus, you know, plus two, plus, uh, plus six and a half for example, and they'd win by freaking 15 or something like that. <laughs> well, you know what, if, 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 if I, and then another time I'll get them, I'll get somebody's a 12 point underdog and they'll win outright. And I'm just kicking myself. I'd be like, well, why didn't I just bet the money line? If that's, if that's going to happen. I mean, what, how, how does, I don't know. I say, how does your pro, how, how does the algorithm account for that? Does that give you a little bit of a, a advice as far as that goes or. So, yeah, that's actually, you've hit upon what I think is the actually, actually the most valuable feature of our program. It's not in production yet, and it's probably not gonna be live for a few months. And I don't wanna talk a lot about it now, but basically the coolest thing that we're gonna have is just what you said. If you made a bet, if you, if you usually, if you win big in certain situations, but let's say, like you said, let's say you bet the Giants plus six and they win the game outright. And you were like, damn, I left some money on the table. We are gonna have a way to tell you when you should uh, up the odds a little bit and say, hey, this is an area that you're not only good, but you're really good and so good that you usually, your margin of victory in these games is enough where you can bet this one outright to win. And it's a little more nuanced than that, but basically now that there's so many alt spreads, every game, every bet, every total, even, even player props now have, you know, you can bet LeBron to score 25 in a game. You can bet him to score 26, 27. You can bet total, uh, totals like 210, 209, 208. So the, the next incarnation of our, of, our, uh, of our tool will have a, will enhance the predictive ability and tell you exactly where on those alt spreads you should be. Bobby, no, you've been honest. Bobby, you've been playing around with, with this thing a little bit. Yeah. Um, what, give what's your? I mean, again, like 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 Steve was saying, we're still in beta. Obviously, it's still probably a little little bit buggy. But 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 get, tell everybody. I mean, what what is your experience with? It? I mean, like what what does it what does it do kind of on a day to day basis? Yeah. So one of the things that I that I like that that it does teach me, and I'm pulling it up right now on my on my phone so I can check it. Um, for example, uh, for the NBA, my my bias definitely is taking me to I, I I bet more away games and I do better with my home games. Um, I do I do significantly better when I'm betting a favorite versus the spread than when I'm betting an underdog versus the spread. Um, is that something you thought of beforehand? Did, did you have any idea? I thought it was possible, but I I would have thought that it, I would have thought that it would have been closer to even than it is. I'm you know looking at. From from what from what I've entered on in the app, um, almost you have a decent amount of data in there. What's that? You have a decent amount of data. Yeah, in there. A decent amount, yeah. Um, but I, I'm I'm actually like below 500 barely in in the underdogs, and I'm just wow. absolutely crushing on the favorites. Wow. Um, and and that's not and that's just on that's on the the spread. So uh, that's that's something that sort of surprised me, and it's just an interesting thing that I didn't. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't have thought that about myself going into it. I actually wouldn't have even realized it. So it is kind of, it is valuable that way. And I'm going to, I'm interested to see what it does for the rest of the baseball season. And as I start entering every one of my, my bets all the time, it's, it's obviously going to become more and more efficient and useful for me, but it's, it's, it definitely is interesting that, and, and, and I did, I did adjust some of my, my betting takes on that. I, I, you know, I post my bets, uh, the, my favorite bets of the day on our site and uh, I started adjusting and just giving a little bit more of an edge, saying my favorite bets would be the ones where I was betting a team minus three and a half instead of a team plus three and a half that was an underdog. So you What's, altered and so, okay. And so did that. So when you make those, when you when you kind of change your predictions a little bit based on what the program shows you, yeah. Did that does that end up being correct? Like, are you apt? Did, did you did you kind of you've kind of lost games that you didn't push out there and. 
Yeah, they're, 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 for the most part, that what I it wasn't that I wouldn't have bet them, but let's say I would have put three times as much of a bet on the other one, or two times as much of a bet on on the favorite side of things. And it was also because I was realizing that I I, get, I think that I get a little too worried about backdoor, specifically for NBA, like backdoor covers. I always worry about a little bit, probably too much. Um, but I still, I, if I if I have a strong take on a, on a game. And it, and it supports that I'm, I'm still going to go with my bet. I just might might drop the the units I, I place on it um, at this point until I have a, a larger sample to, to to come from. But although I do have a, a, a pretty decent sample size so far, but it's it needs to keep, I need to start doing it with every game, and uh, that's what I plan on doing next season with the with the app. Steve, you 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 um Steve, you you hinted at this before. Um, and I keep Bobby keeps using the term the app or whatever. I, I didn't mean the app. I sorry. No, no, well, no, no. That's good. You said that. So, so yeah. what, what, so what, what is the state of the, of the development of the, of the program now? Um, it, do we, do you anticipate it being on a web, a web-based or, uh, program, a phone-based program or where, where, where are we at? So right now it is exclusively on phone, on mobile, and it is a mobile website, but we are going to turn it into an app and maybe even in the next month or so. So we are on track to make it an app. But for now, we developed it as a mobile website only on phone. So if there's call for desktop version, we'll make a desktop version. And we are definitely in the works to make it into an app. But it's very easy to use as a mobile site. You just open up a browser and, you know, it doesn't doesn't really lose any functionality because it's not an app. We call it the app. We call it an app. It'll be an app soon enough. Uh, we just it was just easier for us to program on uh, on a web browser. And then we'll we'll appify it is really what we'll so do. So just to, just to show everybody, so this is this is just the only this is the home page right now. I mean, it's, it's just something that we have up there. Um, it's, it's, it's usable on the phone though right now. Oh, okay. Right. So if yeah. you went to, right on the phone, so this is just a placeholder. Okay. On the, if you went to uh, on the phone, you would see it wouldn't it doesn't look like it's on the phone. It would show okay. you the actual. We just have the actual you know software, the actual program. So can people play around with it now or no? So. Yeah, I mean, why not? Okay, if you want to play around with it now, it's still a little buggy. Obviously, we don't have a lot of in the next in the next. We're, we keep adding stuff. Like right now, we're we're adding a lot of things and fixing bugs. So if you want to use it now, you'll see it get better in the next few days. One thing we don't have for the next few days is a lot of explanation how to use it. We're adding like the uh, the coach marks and the onboarding and stuff. Okay. But just from hearing us talk about it, maybe you'll be able to use it. So on your phone, go to m.bettertakes.com. And obviously, at this time of the year, it's kind of only relevant if you're a baseball better. The other sports are winding down. There's not a lot going on. So if you bet baseball, feel free to go to m.bettertakes.com. Um, if, if it's too hard to figure out on your own, give it a week or so and come try it. Um, you'd be a beta tester and we'd love to hear your feedback. Every page has a little intercom thing. That's a chat and the chat goes right to me. So um, definitely if you want to start using it, feel free to use it. Um, it's free right now. It, there's always going to be a core of it. That's free, but some of it, some of the more advanced features that uh, hopefully will make people money. We're going to put behind paywalls, but for right now, everything is free and open. And you can uh, email me at steve at bettertakes.com or you can go on the, the chat right on the thing. And I'd love to hear anyone's feedback about it. So, um, so if, if someone puts their email address in here, that to, we're gonna, uh, they're going to they're gonna be notified? Of yeah. So if you put your email address in there, okay. when it's actually live, we'll send you a notification and tell you it's live. But if you want to screw around with it now, you know, you yeah. can do that too. We actually are looking for, for beta users because... It's hard to find people that, that really bet baseball every day. So if anyone's listening to this and you want to check it out on your phone only, go to m.bettertakes, and it's B-E-T-O-R, like sports better, m.bettertakes.com. And there's not a lot of instruction right now, but just start using it. You can figure it out. Uh, if you're smart enough to bet sports, you should be smart enough to figure it out. And uh, I'd love to hear what you think of it. And, and did you is our Discord channel up yet? The Discord channel is not really being manned at the moment. That's going to take a, that's about a month away. Yeah, but we are going to have um, we're going to have different um, different tiers. The the main program, the analyzer that I've described, is going to be free. But we do have some uh, more advanced functionality that's going to be layered on top of that. And we will have a pro tier with a lot of super super cool stuff. Uh, I think it's going to be about a hundred bucks a month. 
But if you bet even 30 or $40 a game, it's probably worth it. And with that membership, we'll have a Discord channel that uh, Bobby and other exports are, uh, experts are going to export. Sports experts should be exports, huh? Uh, Bobby and other people are going to man at times. And we will kind of add a, uh, you know, we, we want to we wanna help betters as much as possible. We want to help you win. So we'll have a Discord channel with live, you know, ask the ex experts and, uh, and give you some more personal help too. Well, well, basically, we'll, we'll we'll keep everybody updated on on the progress of everything, and we have a Twitter and, and Better Takes is a Twitter account, which is going to become more active and things like that. Yeah. Um. But um. But we will definitely keep everybody updated as as this develops because I think that this is well. One thing is for sure that that no nobody is doing this. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, whether 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 it it it, it it's actually going to make people a better better. It, you know, time will tell. I mean, I, I think, I think as we had this discussion before, I think all information is useful. So I think that if I go to a site, it's going to tell me that I bet 70% favorites. I think that's in and of itself, good information. And if I could use that information to make me even better and make me win more or lose less or whatever, then, 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 it, then it's, then it's gravy. So I'm, I'm really interested to see for the people that actually, you know, make intelligent use of it, like what the results are. You know, because I, as I look, I, I do think it's extremely interesting. Yeah, um, it's great to find out about yourself, whether or not you make money. It's just valuable information, you know, but it is going to be interesting to see, you know, how people use it and whether or not, they, you know, it'd be great to hear stories of people that that were losing betters, but then used our app and, and that crossed them over the line and they started winning. You know, like you said, it's valuable, even if it doesn't help you at all. Just knowing the stuff about yourself has value. But uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see if it plays, how it plays out. All right. Well, uh, th thanks, Steve, for coming on. Uh, Bobby, as always, you're the man. And uh, hang on there with your second after I stop recording and to look for more, uh, more updates and better takes.